Hello everyone, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to discuss seven plants that I think are rather underrated. I believe I did a video earlier this year discussing a very similar topic, I think I did five underrated plants, but there are so many plants I notice as a buyer that are just passed over so frequently at the plant shop where I work. So I wanted to take a moment to highlight those plants. And there's also a few other plants that I just noticed aren't really popular on the market or readily available at all, so I did want to take a moment to spotlight those as well. So the first one I'm going to talk about today is Apicia. So this is Apicia cupriata. I'm not exactly sure on the variety of this particular Apicia, nor are many of my Apicias I don't really know the varieties on because there are so many varieties, um, which is one really exciting thing about these plants. You're going to see how striking the foliage is, and there are so many different varieties of Apicias. So Perhaps I'm a little biased because when I do order these at the plant shop and I get to open the box, there are usually five to ten varieties waiting for me in there and it's just such eye candy when I open the box and they're just hit in the face with all these different colors. It really is beautiful. There's green ones, blue ones, purple, red, pink. They're every color you can imagine there is an apicia of that color. So along with this purple variety that I have right here, I also have this green variety, and I should mention that these flower, um, these are related to African violets, they're in the Gesneriaceae family, so they're referred to as Gesneriads or Gesneriads, uh, so these are also known that they're blooming plants, as well as that they are pet safe, so that's something that's really exciting about these plants. But plants that are in the, most plants in the Gesneria, uh, Gesneriaceae family are known to be very sensitive to cold water on the leaves. So if you're going to water these plants from above, I would definitely recommend using warm or at least lukewarm water because that's what the growers who grow these plants use to ensure that they're not going to damage these leaves. So be sure not to get cold water on these leaves if you are going to grow them. Overall, I'm kind of shocked that these plants usually get passed over at the store because one, they're pet safe, two, they flower, and three, there's so many different varieties and there's just, they're, they're so exciting. There's so much to love about these plants. So a really wonderful plant that I highly recommend keeping an eye out for. My next pick is also in the Gesneriaceae family, or referred to as a Gesneriad. So this is a Primalina, or an Asian violet. So Asian violets, as the name sounds, are very similar to African violets, but Asian violets are from Asia. I believe they all are native to China, if I'm not mistaken. So this one right here is a Primalina Loki, and it has some really striking foliage. Once again, these do flower, very similar to Apicias, but these are they take a lot more time to flower than Apicias do. And what I really love about these plants versus African violets is their leaves have some really striking foliage, as you can see. So the leaves have the capacity to get a lot larger. I am admittedly growing this particular uh, Primalina on my coffee table, so it's not very bright light. So if I was growing this Primalina in brighter light, it would definitely be a lot happier with me and probably have a lot more growth, but it's living and it looks fantastic on my coffee table in this pot that my friend from Instagram, Mr. Plant Dad, made for me, so thank you so much. Um, but I really, really enjoy this plant. I've had it growing on my coffee table for almost a year now, and it's been just a joy to just see every time we're sitting at the coffee table. I have another one right here. This one is a Primalina Hoti. I think I might be mispronouncing that. But this one has much more muted foliage than all the other Primalinas. I'll say most Primalinas are very, very exciting, but I just love the color of these leaves. It's a very, like, almost like it was supposed to be shiny, but it's not. And I should mention these leaves, as well as the Apicia, they're super, super fuzzy, so I really enjoy texture in my plants, so that's something I really care for. Similar to the Apicias, you don't want to get these leaves wet with cold water. Um, warm water is okay. Um, they're totally fine. I usually water these plants with lukewarm water. I tend to water all my plants with lukewarm water, just because I don't want to shock any of my plants with cold water. Specifically in the winter time, this time of year when I'm filming this video, winter is coming up, you want to be careful. Your water is going to be a little bit colder if you're just running it from the tap, so you do want to be careful not to water your plants with that freezing cold water. So I do highly recommend giving these plants a go. I'm usually shocked how long they might be sitting at the plant shop if I order them because they're really beautiful. Some of the ones that I get in have some really beautiful purple fuzz on them and it really tends to stand out. Some of them have purple undersides, so there are so many beautiful ones and many of them have much more whiter foliage than the two that I have right here. So I think these two might be a, a tad underwhelming for the rest of the ones that you would see, but I highly recommend keeping an eye out for Asian violets because they are really, really wonderful plants to grow. Next up is a plant that's not very common in cultivation, but it is out there, so I would like to take a moment to spotlight it. This is a piper. So pipers are in the same family as peperomias, so they're both in the piperaceae family, which I collect peperomias, so that's very exciting to me to have another plant in the same family. So this one right here is a piper ornitum. You can see the beautiful foliage, well you can kind of see because the light is very bright on it, but it's got this really beautiful green and pink splashed foliage, 
and on the back side there is a really nice maroon color. It's almost like a wine red color. It's, it's gorgeous. So I really enjoy this plant. It's really fun the way it kind of just vines all over the place. This was a cutting that I got from a friend, so I've been really enjoying watching this one acclimate to my home. There's another piper that's probably a little bit more common. This is probably the more common out of the two, and this one is Piper Parmatum. As you can see, I have this one growing inside a glass enclosure. Pipers are not easy plants. I should lead off by saying that. So they are not necessarily for the beginner gardener. They do require a little bit more attention. They require more humidity. They require more water. There are just a few things about these plants that makes them a little bit more challenging. But um, it would be a little bit more wise to grow your Piper Parmatums if you're looking to get them in an enclosure because I think that definitely gives them more adequate conditions. You can see I do have a little bit of damage <laughs> around some of the leaves from before I learned that, but um, yeah, I would definitely recommend that over growing it out in the open unless you have a greenhouse condition. But I will say the Piper Ornatum, the other one I shared with you guys, definitely is a little bit more easygoing in terms of the humidity factor. So a really, really wonderful plant, a really wonderful genus of plants. What's really cool about Pipers is they're really, as I said, they're related to Peperomias. And if I've talked to you guys about Peperomias before, I probably mentioned that there are over 1,500 species of Peperomias. There are over 2,000 species of Pipers. And while many of these Pipers are much more suitable for outdoor growing, uh, there are a few of them that we can grow inside and grow in our collection. So that's very exciting. So I did want to take a moment to spotlight this really wonderful out there plant. My next underrated plant pick is going to be Sissus. So Sissus are in the grape family. I think that's fairly exciting because they grow in a very similar manner to grapevines in the way that they tend to grow all about your home. Now this one right here is probably one of the most common Sissus that you would see if you were to walk into a houseplant store. This one is a Sissus rhombifolia, and this one is more commonly referred to as the oak leaf Sissus. So I have a rather lush one right here that I've been growing in my home only for a few months. This is definitely a fast grower. I did purchase this plant rather lush, but it is a rather fast grower when you have it in the right conditions. So Sissus do appreciate rather bright light. If you don't give Sissus bright light, they might not react very well. They're not necessarily the easiest plant to grow, um, but they are not a difficult plant to grow whatsoever as long as you, like I said, are giving them the correct conditions. So Sissus do not like to dry out, so you're definitely going to want to pay a little bit more attention to them. They don't recover very well from drying out. They will recover, but they just don't recover very well. Um, and they like a lot of bright light, as I mentioned, and if they get shaded out, they will definitely dry up a little bit. As you see, the back of my pot here, which is underneath the shelf, is totally mowed down. It's just not there anymore but the front of this plant where it has been getting a lot of light is absolutely lush it's like a waterfall of cystus and i absolutely love it so as i mentioned this does tendril about it does have these little uh tendrils that will stick out and they will grab onto anything it can grab onto so if you grow this plant on a trellis a very fine trellis more so than a thick trellis it will definitely latch onto that and grow to its heart's content so a really wonderful plant. This is a really leafy cystus, but there are some more succulent cystus out there. Some of them are known for their very, very succulent stems. I do have one of my home cystus quadrangularis that has very succulent stems, but this one right here is a little bit more succulent leaf. So this is a cystus rotundifolia. This is one that I've been growing in my home for over a year now. It looks very similar to sea grapes, which I think is really cool. Sea grapes are a very common plant. Um, that grows outdoors in southern United States and I'm sure in other places in the world as well, but this plant is just so funky the way it vines about. I have a larger specimen in my home that is definitely I've gotten much more recently, but I wanted to show you guys this one since I've been growing it in my home for at least a full growing season. So this particular cystus and the more succulent cystus are going to be on the going to be on the drier side, while the the cystus that I shared with you at the beginning, the the oak leaf cystus that I have down here, is definitely going to be a little bit more on the moist side. So that's a little bit different care depending on the cystus that you're growing, but I just wanted to share them with you because cystus are such a vast group of plants. There are so many of them, and I think it's so interesting that they're related to grapes. I usually point them out to people in the houseplant store where I work if they're looking for English ivy because I tend to not sell English ivy in the store because it's very prone to pests and it's just not a very easy grower. Can you grow it? Absolutely, but it's just not a plant that I typically recommend. So I usually push people towards the cystus or the, the oak leaf ivy or the grape leaf ivy, which is very similar. So it's a very wonderful plant. It's usually passed over unless I'm taking the time to point it out to people and really show them what's wonderful about it. So I did want to once again take a moment to share this wonderful plant with you guys today. 
Another plant I think is very underrated is Syngoniums. So this is an aroid, and an aroid is a plant that falls into the Araceae family, very similar to Philodendrons, Pothos, and Monstera, just to name a few. So Syngonium are commonly referred to as arrowhead vine. This one right here is a Syngonium podophyllum, and I wanted to show you guys this one today because this is probably the most common one if you were to walk into a standard houseplant store. This is definitely the one that you would see, but there are a bunch of different Syngoniums out there and they are so cool, but I do notice that Syngoniums aren't usually the most hottest plant out there. Houseplant enthusiasts definitely seem to be leaning a little bit more towards philodendrons in terms of aroids, but one that I did want to point out is actually behind me right here, pardon me as I grab it and a drop of the tray that it was with, um, is this Syngonium erythrophyllum yanocarti rhodes. So this is a cultivar of the Syngonium erythrophyllum, if I'm not mistaken. And this, as you can see, has some really lovely dark foliage. It's very, very dark. It's nearly jet black in the new leaf. It's, it's really wonderful. And what's really lovely about this plant is the undersides, very similar to the Piper parmatum, has this lovely wine red color. So it, it's really, really gorgeous. It's a Syngonium that I don't normally see. I did get this one from Steve's Leaves, one of my favorite places to purchase plants from plants from online so if you're interested in this plant I would definitely recommend pushing you in that direction but I really really enjoy this plant you can see it's 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 really gorgeous compared to the many green plants that I have in my home I really enjoy the ones that do have some really funky characteristics so versus the Syngonium podophyllum which is much more common I would definitely recommend giving the Syngonium erythrophyllum a, a try now there is a very you know as I say that this plant's very underrated there is definitely a version of this plant that is very hot on the market right now, the, the variegated Syngonium, or the Syngonium podophyllum albo variegatum, which is immensely popular, I would say, at the moment, but I would think that that one has the spotlight right now, so I definitely would like to take a moment to spotlight these other Syngoniums that I think are really interesting. And this one that I have right here, it's very different than the other Syngoniums. This one right here is a Syngonium chiapens. Uh, this one is really different. It looks definitely much more on the terms of like a philodendron uh, in terms of its foliage. So it almost looks to me like a, a mature form of Monstera sultipicana, if you are familiar with Monstera sultipicana, just in the terms of the way that the leaf looks, not necessarily anything else other than the leaf shape and the venation. So a really, really cool plant that I have with me right here. Um, this one is very new to me, so I don't exactly have any care tips. Um, but my other Syngoniums, I am letting them dry out roughly 50%. And if I am noticing yellowing leaves on my Syngoniums, I am knowing that I am giving it too much water and I really have to hold back on that watering. So they do have a telltale sign to let you know if you are giving them too much water. And they will wilt very quickly if you are not giving them enough water and they will usually bounce back very well. So while I can't speak necessarily for the Syngonium Chiapens, I can tell you that the Syngonium Podophyllum and the Syngonium erythrophyllum will definitely wilt and recover very easily upon underwatering and then once you water it, recovers very easily. So this is a really funky new variety. The other ones I'm much more familiar with, but I definitely wanted to take a moment to highlight these lesser known forms of Syngoniums because most people are familiar with Arrowhead Fine, but I don't think many people are familiar with the Syngonium Chia Pen. So definitely a really funky plant that I highly recommend keeping an eye out for. The next underrated plant I'm going to talk about today is Plectranthus. So this one right here in particular is a Plectranthus verticillatus, uh, but there are a lot of different Plectranthus that are out there. There's one actually, I think this is in the same family, this is in the same family as Coleus, um, which is another type of Plectranthus, but those are much more grown outside, and I think that they are a little bit more difficult to grow inside. However, there are quite a few Plectranthus that I do find some very good luck with growing inside, this one in particular. And what I love about it is its woodlandy appearance, so it's a, it's a really nice uh, contrast to the tropical plants that we are growing in our home. So it looks a little bit very similar to a uh, Creeping Charlie Pilea, but this is a very succulent plant, and I really enjoy that. And if you actually give it a smell if you mess with the leaves. It has a very sweet or very subtle sweet smell to it, um, which is really nice, but I actually do have another Plectranthus in my home that I think I enjoy a little bit more. It's this Plectranthus Ernstii, and this one, if you mess with it, has a very, very harsh uh, lemon-lime smell. It's, it's, it's very, very pungent, and it's actually, it's really nice, so it's very fresh smelling. Um, this one right here is very, very interesting because this Plectranthus Ernstii is known as a natural bonsai. So this one forms a caudex. So if you're familiar with the plant a ponytail palm, which is a very common plant, that one has a very swollen trunk base. It looks exactly like a tree trunk, but that's a caudex, so it's where it's storing all of its water. So this plant does the same thing. So you can see this swollen woody trunk in the base of this plant. I should, pot I should probably consider potting this up soon because it's sitting inside this little terracotta yogurt cup, so it could probably use 
a little bit more room at this point but it's really underwhelming when you see these plants at first because they just have like six leaves they're usually in little tiny pots I've never seen them sold in anything larger than a two inch pot and they're very very small very underwhelming but once you bring them home these things spring to life I have had this plant for maybe eight months not even a full year uh, just one growing season and this thing has sprung to life I grow this one in a west facing window and I also grow the Plectranthus uh, verticillatus in the west facing window so these plants do appreciate brighter light they would definitely appreciate being in a brighter light condition but I would not be surprised if these guys can take a little bit less light because mine that I do have in the west facing window have some purple edging to the leaves so that's telling me that they are receiving a lot of light to perhaps their liking so they would definitely be able to grow in a, a little bit of a darker environment but this Plectranthus right here I think is incredibly underrated. It is so underwhelming when you first find it in the stores but once you bring it home and you let it grow for you it's such a wonderful plant. They do flower. They flower a lot actually. It's um, exactly like a coleus flower. You can see it right here. I have a little one that I haven't removed yet. I usually remove them from the top because I want them to really focus on the the leaf growth um, and the Plectranthus verticillatus will also bloom these same flowers right here. So it is cute but it's not you know the most overwhelming flower so you don't necessarily it's not the most exciting flower so really really cool plants really underrated highly recommend giving them a go they're very very common and the, they're usually in stock at the plant store where i work but they're usually passed over which is maybe why they're always in stock so highly recommend giving this plant a go it's super super fun the last plants i'm going to talk about today are cryptanthus i find these plants incredibly underrated but they are so beautiful you can see this bright pink color and the green contrast that it has it's really really lovely and definitely a really underrated houseplant but these are so easy to grow it's actually such a shame that they are passed over quite a bit because these are so so easy to grow these do prefer brighter light I should mention this is a cryptanthus bivitatis and they refer to it as a pink star if I'm not mistaken um, they are so easy to grow they just want more light so I grow this one in a south facing window I actually grow all the cryptanthus I have in a south facing window because I find they keep their color the best when they're in a south facing window but really you could put this plant anywhere and it will live it just will not keep its color so I have tried this plant out in very dark corners of my home and it's faded back like completely green but as soon as I've moved it back it has really gotten that pink color strong and very quick so experiment with it this is definitely a plant where you could really be surprised with the way it can survive some of these conditions so this one right here has a very very bright pink color but there's another one I grow in my home right here um, this one is a cryptanthus absolute zero I think um, so this one has some gray and black coloration to the leaves and once again if I was not growing this one in a south facing window I would expect this one to probably have some very vibrant green colors to it um, but these in bright light really have some really vibrant colors as you can see so these plants are very drought tolerant too um, they do not require a lot of water I'm probably watering my cryptanthus every two weeks or so they are very very drought tolerant and they withstand drought very well could they appreciate a little bit more water probably but I'm pretty forgetful with these plants and they've been growing very very well for me these I believe are pet safe or non-toxic which is very exciting and they are epiphytes which means that they grow um, in nature attached to things like trees so these would do very well mounted in fact this is a plant that I usually mount at the shop where I work because it's very easy to mount them and they look really really nice when they're mounted on a piece of wood with some moss around them they really pop with the color that they have so I really really enjoy these um, definitely recommend giving them a go you'll probably see them in stock um, in smaller pots I usually get these in my terrarium selection and I'll also get them in my cacti selection as well so there are quite a few of these that I'll get in there's red ones there's pinker ones there's you know blacker ones there's there's a lot of different colors but these two right here are the ones that I am primarily growing in my home at least the two largest ones that I have so really really love these plants I think that they're really funky um, not very popular they are a little bit spiky not like a cactus spike but just like a little bit if you catch it the wrong way it might cut you a little bit but not like a it's, it's not bad it's not I'm, I'm making it seem worse than it is but they're really really interesting plants I think right here you can see it's doing enough justice on how funky they are so if you're looking for a really funky out there plant as long as you have enough light or try it out with no, not much light if you want to give it a go it'll definitely live but if you want that vibrant color give these plants a lot of light and you're gonna watch them flourish there are so many plants that are incredibly underrated, so I would love to hear from you guys which ones you think are personally underrated in the comments. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching my video today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day!